Different labs give many different results when it comes to the carbon dating of early Quranic manuscripts. Some even predate the beginning of Islam itself. We'll reveal to you Dr. Stephen Shoemaker's conclusion about what this means for the standard Islamic narrative. Uh, we've been talking about carbon dating of Quranic manuscripts. We even started it to talk about the Sana'a manuscript last time, and today we'll continue with our discussions concerning the Sana'a manuscript. Dr. J, thank you as always. Uh, so you, you mentioned at least two of the four labs that were used to do carbon dating on the Sana'a manuscripts known to be one of the earliest Quranic manuscripts, and at the same time, it's known as palimpsest. Yeah. Now, there are five labs, really, we're going to talk about, but four in Europe, and it's the four European labs that I'm interested in right now, uh, because these four European labs do not support what the one in Arizona uh, had, the earliest one that uh, Sedegi and uh, Bergman and also Uwe Bergman were the ones, uh, the, that was their material work from Stanford University. We want to go to Europe because now we're talking about other, the same type of scientific experiment on the Sana manuscript, but you're going to get completely, or not completely, but very different results. So let's go to the screen and let's look and see uh, on the screen what we have here. And we have the th three from three other labs besides the Lyon labs, because we in the last episode we looked at the Lyon lab. It did not agree with what we have in Stanford or what we have in Arizona. This, this the same sample from the very same uh, manuscript. Uh, very same goat because it's the same page. And also Christian Robin did uh, some testing as well. He did the one in Lyon because he's right. French. He did the one in Lyon. Right. So they, they wanted to send these two other, three other European laboratories, the, the Research Laboratory for Archaeology and the History of Art at the University of Oxford, uh, the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich, and then the Labour. I'm not even going to get into that. I'll desecrate the German language. But there you see in Kiel. So those, you have Oxford, Zurich, and Kiel, England, Switzerland, and Germany. Now take a look. There's the Lyon Laboratory, 388 to 535. In Zurich, the same material uh, had dates of 565 to 660. In Kiel, it was 430 to 495. Uh, and then in Oxford, 595 to 658. Let's look at a graph. Now this is a graph that Dr. Mark Dury, good friend of ours, you've used him uh, for, uh, with your doctoral work. I, I know him. I've been on the same platform with him. He's a good friend. We keep in touch. He sent me this. I asked him if he could, because he's done a, a lot of study on Al-Jalad's material on the Arabic, mm -hmm. and he's also done study on these uh, radiocarbon dating results. So he put together this graph here. Uh, it, of course, it's hard to look at it. It's hard to say, let me just uh, unpack it for you. So looking at the Lyon, there's the Lyon dates and those 388 to 535. So take a look there. Uh, that in the blue, that's the Lyon dates for their radiocarbon date of the same manuscript, the same piece. Here you have uh, the uh, Kiel German uh, dating, and of course they dated from 430 to 495. Can you see visually how different they are when you look at on a graph? Uh, when we look at the Zurich switch dating, it's 565 to 660. Can you see in the green there? That is quite a bit different than the one that you have in Kiel. And then, of course, the Oxford one, the the last one, it is uh, 595 to 658. Just looking at those four together, it's between 390 and 550 is what we're getting here. And Islam, let me repeat it, Islam started it in the year 610 AD if we were to take the traditional narrative seriously. Yeah. Note uh, that the life of Muhammad's dates would be from 570 to 632. That's when he lived. So we're talking about, uh, that's his life there. We're talking about between 80 and 220 years too early. These are way too early. Uh, they. You can see why the problem, this uh, is a problem. Uh, will emerge if you use the early dates. That's right. Because then this means this has nothing to do with Muhammad. Uh, when you look at when the Quran is put together, which I've just circled up there, notice that was put together at the time of Uthman, 652. Well, this is 102 to 260 years too early. Yes. So real problem here. And if I, uh, I would comment, uh, it's fair to say that's the age of the animal skin, but do not use those dates when they're favorable uh, to, to your, let's say, uh, uh, dating uh, agenda and claim that they are proof that the writing 
was done in a certain date. Absolutely. That's yeah. a, that's all we're trying yeah. to say. Yeah. So, and and we're not going to say that there and even you know, here's the irony. I don't even care if these dates are correct. They are correct, but I don't even care if this is the case. Because what this tells me is that this material comes from pre-Islamic, pre-Quranic, pre-Muhammad writings which we know existed. They were in Arabic. These are these are the sectarian uh, writings. We also know that this is the Syro-Aramaic writings that were made in and then were then translated into Arabic for the Arabic speaking people. That has been going on since the fifth and sixth century. Why is it we would be surprised that these would not exist? But we're not gonna go there yet. That's something we're gonna talk about. Let's look at their conclusions. So let's go to the next slide. So what are the conclusions when you look at these dates? Well, Dorosh, says this. He says, one could perhaps explain dates that were too late as the result of some sort of contamination by another substance that was interfering with the obtaining a correct analysis of the amount of radiocarbon present in the parchment leaves. That's true. And there could be all kinds of contamination. We don't know. Uh, Fideli talks about the fact that when you put these parchment in large metal boxes, even the secretion from the metal boxes would also have, would affect the, 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 the radiocarbon dating. And the fact that there's not, they're not open to the air would also have an effect on how they start to deteriorate or not. If they're in a damp environment, especially if they're in a monastery and they're in damp environment, that would affect also the radiocarbon deterioration. So he says such early dates, however, as much are much harder to explain, and yet they cannot be accepted. Instead, the problem may lie with the conditions arid, semi-arid climate that we were mm -hmm. talking about earlier, under which the cattle, the hides of which were later turned into parchment were raised, or in this case, goats or deer. Any, regardless, he's saying this is a difficulty. We have not even taken this into consideration and you need to do so. Because if you don't do so, then of course you're gonna, you're gonna trust these dates without realizing they are much too early. They're, they predate Islam, they predate Muhammad, they predate the Quran. Not a problem if you don't if you realize that much of the Quran is borrowed from other or other texts, as we're going to see later on. So, what does Shoemaker say? What is his conclusions? Let's go ahead and read what he says. Such results hardly settle the matter, but instead only confirm that once again something clearly is not working correctly with this method. This method has shown itself incapable in its current practice of producing consistent and reliable results for objects fashioned in Western Asia during the early Middle Ages. At the very least, it certainly is not working in the case of this manuscript, the Sana manuscript. So that's the that's the difficulty with carbon dating. It's just exactly. too inexact. And for people like Van Putin, if he's going to continue saying this, this pretty much shuts down any argument against uh, mid seventh century dating. He needs to be careful because the scholars are not going to agree with him. There are a lot of people who are agreeing with him because they want to agree with him. And if you do agree and you're being that simplistic, I would suggest that you need to look at the science. The science does not suggest what he's trying to say. And then that's the case uh, with many scholars. You have the pro for the scholars and the uh, uh, you know those who are against what the scholar is saying. But here, at least, it's really a tricky situation when you have someone like Deroche actually agreeing with the dilemma um, you have to take this issue very seriously and like you said it's not as simple as just let's look at a date that matches the Islamic traditional narrative the uh, standard Islamic narrative if you wish and and run with it because um, you know like Shoemaker says okay well I can run with the later dates and in my case I like to run with the early dates and we have a problem yeah yeah yeah. What are we going to talk about? Uh, what are we uh, going to talk about next? No, we're going to stay with the Sana manuscript. We want to stay with because remember what we talked about earlier when we were looking and introducing the Sana manuscript a number of episodes ago. That there is a unique thing. Uh, there is a palimpsest. Palimpsest means there are two layers: a lower and an upper layer of script. We're going to unpack that. We're going to talk about it. We're going to show you that this also fascinating has to be taken into consideration because what we're going to find out is the two layers do not agree. Exactly. Thank you so much as always. Thank you everyone for watching us. This is of course uh, our video series on creating the Quran. It is based on a book by Dr. Stephen Shoemaker. And uh, Jay, if you can hand me the book, I want to 
uh, let people see uh, the cover of this book. This is the book that we're talking about. You can find it, by the way, on Amazon uh, or other sources, uh, whatever the case might be. But we highly encourage you, if you want to track along with what we're saying here, to get the book so that everything that we are sharing uh, makes sense to you. Some of the pages that uh, Jay have referenced come from this book. And uh, Shoemaker did an excellent job of... Uh, uh, you know, synthesizing a lot of mat uh, material that is out there and bringing it into a simplified fashion to where it makes sense now how you can look at the big picture. And uh, if you remember, myself and, and Dr. J, we've been talking about this sin issue, which is the standard Islamic narrative problem, the holes in that narrative, uh, uh, you know, and so on and so forth. And I think this book uh, adds more confirmations to that discussion. So thank you again, Dr. J. Thank you everyone for watching. This is Al Fadi, over and out. Blessings to you. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sierra International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.